the biggest difference between my life before and now is that even though I have a full-time job and a one and a half year old daughter, I'm not really stressed hardly ever. In this interview, I talked to Hallie, who moved to Uruguay three years ago. Uh, she's from the States and she moved here with her husband, who's from Argentina. Last year, they had a baby. Um, Hallie has a really very well-paying job. She works at it remotely. And she's chosen Carrasco, which is like the most expensive neighborhood in the capital of Uruguay, Montevideo, to live. So we talk about um, what it's like as a young mother, um, how it was to use the healthcare system, having a baby here. We also talk about what Hallie and her family spend every month. And I really, really want to thank Hallie because she was very open and transparent about this. And I think it's difficult to do that. So really thank you, Hallie. I hope you'll find it helpful. Okay, so Hallie, thanks so much for getting together on your holidays back in the States. <laughs> My pleasure. All right, so if we can start, can you tell me where you're from originally, what you do and when you moved to Uruguay? Okay. I'm originally from Ohio, but I've lived abroad for the last um, almost 20 years. I work in the luxury travel industry for like a bespoke travel company based in New York. And I moved to Uruguay almost three years ago. Great. And tell me, why did you choose Uruguay? And then where did you decide to live? Yeah. So... Um, my husband is Argentine and I lived in Buenos Aires for many years. Um, we were in Barcelona and decided we wanted to be closer to family because we wanted to have a family of our own. And um, the compromise was I won't go to Buenos Aires because it's a bit it's large and a bit chaotic. And right now, politically, it's also a bit complex. So um, I'd been to Uruguay a few times on vacation and visiting family. Um, and just really liked the general climate. Like I always remember flying from Buenos Aires, getting off the plane and just feeling like I could take a big, deep breath, which I could never do in Buenos Aires. I like the, the, um, that nature is so close. You can drive two hours on, you're on the beach. You can drive two hours and you're in the Sierras in the, in the mountains. Um, and so, yeah, it seems like a great place to be in South America, but not to have to worry about all the kind of chaotic craziness and have a tranquil lifestyle and, and have a great place to, to start a family. Right. And we should just add that um, me too. I'm also married to an Argentine. And one of the typical places that Argentinians go during the holidays is Uruguay, right? Yeah. So much so that when I lived in Argentina, because of what you see on the TV with all of the, the scenes shot on the beach in Uruguay, I actually thought that Uruguay was part of Argentina <laughs> when I lived in Argentina. And my husband still says, like, living in Uruguay, he's like, it's sometimes it just smells like my vacations when I was a teenager. Like, he has a very positive relationship to Uruguay because of all those vacations he would go there in the summer. So, yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So when you moved to Uruguay, uh, where did you decide to live? Can so we first moved, we first lived in Punta Caretas for a little bit. We loved it. We were right at the very tipping point. And then from there, it was during the pandemic. So we really wanted to be in a place that had green, like a lot of green space and natural light. And we wanted to actually live in Ciudad Vieja. But or the old city where yeah, I live. The old city. Um, but we found that kind of what we were looking for was more in Carrasco. So we live in Carrasco Norte um, and really like it because, yeah, there's like you hear birds, there's lots of green space, there's parks. Um, and it's like living in a nice suburb, but without feeling like you're in a suburb because you have a nice little city center nearby and we can ride our bikes around. Um, yeah, we really like it. Okay, great. And I believe you rent. We do rent. Um, mm -hmm. we pay, we made the, we made a poor decision of, um, putting the rent in pesos 
So as the dollar hasn't been doing super great in relation to the Uruguayan peso, it was a bad bet, but kind of from an Argentine mentality of the, their peso, which is not the case of the Uruguayan peso. Um, we pay 56,000 a month, which is, I think is reasonable for where we live. The issue that we had is we were told that the, ex the building expenses were a certain amount and now they are two to three times what we were originally told. So that is uh, really pulls the price up. I think we pay like 25, 25 to like 28,000 a month. So in dollars, it ends up being around 2,200, which is a lot. And we would love to get that down. In, to in total. In total. Rent in total. And the rent yeah. Makes yeah. But it's okay. a building that has like, a garage and 24 hour security and a pool and a gym and a place to have a to barbecue and all the amenities, which are nice, but maybe not entirely necessary for us, <laughs> but it's very comfortable. It's very comfortable. And and it's a, it was a brand new building as well. So we were the first tenants, which was pretty nice. That's right. Was it easy to actually, um, to take out a rental contract because there are often requirements here aren't there like yeah. minimum one or two years we had a three-year contract and we negotiated to have after one year the ability to to sub rent so we could rent it out to somebody else um and then it was relatively easy because we found a good agent and we were able to use uh, my husband's brother-in-law lives in Montevideo. So we were able to use a property that he owns as a guarantee. A guarantee. Mm. Yeah. So that really helped it. And the it's the owner that we work with is like, he gets it. He's reasonable. He thinks he, he understands that we're good renters, even though we probably are not like the traditional standard um, in Uruguay. Um. What has surprised you for good about life in Uruguay? Um, I think what I what is really good for me personally is I tend to be like, let's go, let's do this, let's fix this, kind of this immediacy to everything. And when I first arrived, I wanted to kind of apply that to life, to getting paper, to getting my residency, to finding a place to live, just kind of figuring things out. And at the beginning, I would get frustrated when it didn't work out that way. It wasn't reciprocated. <laughs> and I've actually realized, I realized that that so is dumb. actually better because no one is going to get worked up and stressed out on the other end. So there's no reason for you to do that either. And I have a job that can be very fast paced, very intense, very demanding so I find that that like climate and, and that element of the culture is a really nice balance to my personality, to my work, um, you know, working with like the American market, it's just a different pace. And I, I, I think it's, it helps me like have a good equilibrium. Right. Like a kind of, does it help you with work-life balance? It does. It does. Yes, yes, yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So I'm just jumping in here because by the end of the interview, Hallie actually asked me if she and her husband could have a consultation with me um, to look into other neighborhoods in Montevideo that they would love just as much, but that would be more affordable and allow them to start being able to save. They really are spending a lot of money at the moment, much more than I think is necessary. I must say, I think we could potentially halve their costs. Um, if you'd like to learn how to have a consultation with Guru Wai, with me, then check out the show notes below. And so that's something that you that you found really helpful um, to you personally. What about something that's not so great that drives you nuts about Uruguay? Um... Sometimes it's like hard to get like a straight, direct answer. And so that can be kind of like frustrating. But in general, the only, the only thing that like bothers me is that it's very expensive. 
There's nothing really that like drives me crazy. I think sometimes not being able to get like a direct straight answer in then like bureaucratic situations. Is, can, is, can you give me an example? Um, mm, let me come back to you on that one. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. I love the fact that, you know, you're struggling to find something that yeah, you don't no. like about your vibe. I, yeah, for me, it's the, the cost of living that has been the most um, surprising and challenging. But I also understand that there are like different sectors and different lifestyles in Uruguay. And what I've realized is that like, whatever, there's a lot to live well that is privatized. And if you kind of move into that lifestyle, then it can become very expensive. But I think there are other ways to do it. We've just set ourselves up in that range. And it's hard to downgrade. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Can we get an idea of your typical week? Um, because actually, we haven't talked about um, what your family comprises of or who your family yes. comprises yes. of. So maybe perhaps if we can talk about that and then if you could take me through a typical day. Yeah. So um, it's myself, my husband, and we now have a one and a half year old daughter who is Uruguayan. Yeah. I got pregnant with her in Uruguay um, and it was a really great experience. Just all the, the doctors, all the support. I gave birth in the British hospital, which was like, I mean, it was obviously hard to give birth, but it was a dream being there because everybody was so attentive. And I really feel like Uruguay places a lot of value on family and absolutely love children. So I love that wherever we go, if we go to the supermarket, if we go to the dry cleaner, um, you know, people are really friendly, very affectionate to this little baby that I have. And that makes me feel very embraced and like I live in a really warm place. Um, day to day, you know, wake up, we have, um, a really kind of, you hear the birds, it's very green. It's like a really nice way to start the day. And then, um, we have a babysitter that takes care of our daughter. I usually ride my bike to what I call my co-working space, but it's actually just my favorite cafe in Carrasco called La Madriguera. Um, they let you sit there. They have great coffee. I look out this beautiful glass kind of window and um there's trees and plants and you can also sit outside when it's warm outside so i i love starting my day sitting outside um there's kind of like energy but it's a very kind of low key energy so i like that and then around midday i'll ride my bike home um have lunch at home my husband will come home from the studio that where he plays piano to to, he can also ride his bike to there. And then we'll pick up our daughter at daycare, um, which is also a 15 minute walk. Um, and then, yeah, have a really nice dinner and end of the day. That's kind of during the week um, when you have a bit more structure. And then on the weekends, we'll have a barbecue, see friends, go on a walk, um, go away for the weekend, which is very easy to do because you can drive an hour and a half, two hours and be in totally entirely different setting um so yeah i think yeah, like a gorgeous a gorgeous beach a gorgeous beach a... or an estancia inland and um yeah so i i really like the pace of life and the quality of life that we have um in montevideo i think it's quite exceptional well, really but there's also i think a simplicity to things which i like and another thing that i really enjoy especially not being back in the U S is there isn't like consumerism exists, but not to the level of the U S. So I, I, you know, I think it's really grounding to, to go to the park on a weekend and just see everybody standing around and having mate. Um, I find it's, it's a positive um, contribution to like how I also want to live my life. Right. Yeah, no, it's it's true. And also I th people on all from all walks of life, ev there's always a simplicity, for example, about how they spend the weekend. Right. Mm -hmm. 
or mainly the things that they people, value doing. Yeah. Family and friends, I think is like one of the, the most important things and, and, and being, I think being, when the weather is nice, being outside and enjoying the good weather too. And so you touched on, um, friends, how mm-hmm. easy did you find it to make friends? I haven't found it super easy, to be honest. I found it easy to make um, like expat friends, for lack of a better term. Um, I've met some really interesting people, similar age, also some with kids. I've met a few Eurowine friends, but I haven't felt like I've been able to really kind of develop a deeper friendship. Um, I think naturally, you know, when you've grown up in a place, you have your friends from high school, you have your family, you have your partner's family. And so I think that people are, you know, have a lot going on. I find people to be very friendly and warm, but I find it difficult to kind of go deeper and like really develop a friendship. And maybe that just takes time. I've heard that Uruguayans take a little bit longer to open up. and yeah, I'm still learning. So I, I don't have a, an answer there, but I, yeah. I feel like overall people are really friendly and kind. It's just difficult. It's more difficult to, to develop a deeper relationship with somebody. Yeah. I suspect that when um, Noah starts to go to school, um, you'll probably start to make friends that way. Yeah. Certainly when we arrived in Uruguay, our son was five and it was a very good way to make friends. Yeah. Also working remotely, you know, you also can meet people like working together, being out and about, I think. Um, and also having a daughter, you know, you spend a lot of time at home when they're a newborn. So I'm going to, I'm, I want to branch out and continue to meet people. How did you meet the expat, the foreigner friends that you have? Um, I met one through, we were taking like online classes like prenatal pregnancy thing to become moms and she found me um on social media and contacted me and then we became really close friends and then another I met they work at the British school and surprisingly my boss who is Australian they're from Australia put us in touch and they live two blocks away so yeah (laughs) Australians in Uruguay they love it by the way they really love it from Melbourne Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, So you just, um, I'd like to ask you a bit more about um, the childcare uh, Mm -hmm. that you have. Um, Was it easy to find, to set up what's available? What does it cost? Yeah. So it was very, we got very lucky. My mom, I did like prenatal Pilates classes and then they put you into a group of women that are mothers. So it's like a WhatsApp group. And I just asked, Hey, does anybody have a nanny? And I got sent a few options. And literally the first one that we met with, she's young. I think she's 21 studying medicine. Um, it was just a really good fit. Um, and it has worked very well with her. There's kind of a fine line between like, um, having somebody formally employed versus informally. So we kind of learned how to navigate that. Um, she's great. She's very responsible, reliable. And then in our neighborhood, there's a daycare called Potpourri, which is excellent. There's my daughter now is one and a half. She started at one. There's two teachers for seven kids. It's in a house and a garden. All the kids wear these cute, adorable little uniforms. And you can just tell they're happy to get dropped off. They're happy when you pick them up. Um, in total, I think we pay, um, about between the babysitter and the school about 700 a month but it's basically we think about it almost full-time um because I work full-time so I think at least in comparison to the prices in the U.S. for the quality of care that we have I think it's I think it's a good price personally and and it's very like everybody's happy my daughter's happy we're happy it's easy it's comfortable um yeah, it's, I think that's been one of the seamless, most one of the most seamless parts of of where we live and how easy it was to set up. Okay, great. Um, if you could just share a little about a bit about your experience with healthcare, 
um, you know, how it was, how it works for you, the quality mm -hmm. and the costs as well regarding yeah. you guys being a, a young family. Basically. Young family. Yeah. So when we first moved here, I, everybody had recommended the British hospital. Um, and because of wanting to get pregnant and give birth in a foreign country, I wanted to be very comfortable. And the standards I think are like the same as the U S or Europe, or even better as far as the service is concerned, the facilities, like it's, it's world-class. I would say my husband, um, joined the Asociación Española because it was much cheaper. So I think originally I paid $130 a month for just myself and the Asociación Española was like 40. And I think it's good, but the service, you have to kind of call a few months in advance. You get passed from operator to operator. So it functions, but the British hospital is like a whole nother level. So now though, with the three of us were in the British hospital um, and we actually ended up switching because it was, we were paying like 800, almost like 750, probably $750 a month. The good thing is when I gave birth, it covered everything. Whereas I know in the US, you have to pay like a large deductible, except um, the epidural, which I think was like 1,200. Um, and now we've moved to Sumum because it once you turn 40, I'll be 40 this year, the British hospital becomes very expensive. I actually, Sumum was fine, but I, I prefer the British hospital. So I think it's very, having lived in Spain and there for private healthcare, that was also really good. I paid like 50 euros a month to now paying almost 700, 750 a month. It's obviously a lot more expensive. Um, but I do think the service, the facilities, the quality of care, the efficiency, like it's easy to get appointments. Um, it's really nice. And that would be something that I would find very difficult, for example, to downgrade. Right. So this is in the British hospital, you're saying? British hospital and Sumum is comparable, but I don't mm -hmm. think the service is as good as the British hospital. Okay, so just so that to to get this, um, just to to get the the costs clear here, um, because you you're really talking about the top level of healthcare. It's like a the premium top, healthcare top option healthcare, here like in Europe, the, right? The highest level possible, and Sumum is about a hundred to two hundred dollars cheaper than the British hospital. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the top, but I I I it's really nice. And right. And you you said that you were paying $120 a month for myself originally at the beginning. And you at as a woman who was 30, 39 at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, the when I gave birth, literally, um, I was almost like overkill, like a different nurse would come in every two hours and they had a. Um, a psychologist and they had a nutritionist. And I just, I felt, you know, giving birth in a foreign country, I felt so embraced and so taken care of. And it was just, I, I drive by the British hospital to, to this day. And I have like great feelings because of the positive experience I had giving birth to my daughter there. So I can right. be the ambassador if they want. I'm getting paid. Yeah. I'm getting paid for this later. <laughs> Not. <laughs> no. All right, great. And just um I'd just love to hear a little bit about um, you know, having a baby and how having a bit well, I mean you told me about it yeah, right now. Is yeah. there anything that you would add? I feel like we chose a great place to start a family. One, because it's a culture, like I said, that embraces family, that values family. Um, that loves children, I think as well, you know, living in Carrasco in a place with lots of green and quiet and hearing the birds, like I, you know, I would wake up with my newborn and go on long walks. Um, we had great health care. Yeah, I felt like it was a great place to start a family. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. I wouldn't change, I wouldn't change anything as far as that is concerned. Excellent. That's and I'm, great. And I'm very proud to say that I have a year of my daughter. Oh. Okay. So Hallie, um, we're about to finish the main section of the interview, but really um, 
one thing that struck me as we're talking is the fact that you are really in a very expensive part of Montevideo, the most expensive area. And you're a young family. And I was wondering, like, if you could, if you'd be so kind as to share details about how much you're spending mm -hmm. um, in the different areas, that will be so helpful for other people. Right. And if there are things like that you would have done differently, maybe if if you were now based on the experience that you have. Yeah, I think we love living in Carrasco, but living in, like you said, one of the most expensive neighborhoods, I think all the services and even just the cost of the supermarkets nearby are high. And so you kind of end up in this bubble world where everything seems super expensive, but I know that there is other ways to do it. So um, as I mentioned, we have about 2,200 with rent and the building expenses. Um, a car, having a car in Montevideo is also expensive because we have our monthly car payments, gas, insurance. And I think it's about $700 a month with everything. Um, Childcare is about 700 to 800 a month. On groceries, we spend about 1,200 a month. Um, I think those are like the main components. So of fixed costs, we probably have six to 7,000 a month dollars. And which is um, a lot here in your world. Which is a lot in Uruguay, especially when you see the the salaries that people are paid. So we're all, we we're always like, how do people survive? But I think our air is getting into this like comfortable high end sector, and we didn't see tons of apartments and just went for what seems like a nice, comfortable, beautiful place. And you know we're paying the price of that. Um, another thing that I found to be a bit frustrating is you know when we're thinking about. Do we want to settle down here? Do we want to buy a house here? Kind of what are the next steps? Um, it does seem that when you are not a part of like the Uruguayan system, you know, you're not employed, you're not paying taxes, you're not directly a part of that system or have FONESA, which is a supplement that helps the government helps with healthcare, that um, the system isn't really malleable in that way even though I have a good income my husband has property in Spain so we feel a little kind of hard to know how we would make the next step as far as like getting access to a mortgage interest rates um, that I think has also been frustrating and sometimes it can also feel like you know um, it's hard to understand fully that the social mobility um, in a place like Uruguay, even though I do think it is, as far as like rankings go, a, a good place in that sense. So, yeah, I think our biggest issue with Uruguay is um, our current financial system. Right, as a, as a family. family. As a family, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Okay, so life in Uruguay is? Life in Uruguay is tranquil, stable, and solid. The cost of living. Very high if you live in Cardasco. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. The cost of living is very high if you live in Cardasco. <laughs> okay. Uruguay wine. Uruguay wine to me right now is all about Marcelan, which I discovered through you and I'm obsessed with. I went to a wine tasting a couple of days ago and it was like, bring on the Marcelin. Bring on the Marcelin. And I went to this fancy wine shop in like upstate New York and they had Uruguayan wine actually. And I was like, oh, have you heard about Marcelin? They're like, no, but we will take a note. I'm like, you guys don't know what you're missing. Yeah. It is really amazing. Yeah. Food in Uruguay. Food in Uruguay is fresh. Um, and I think the dining scene is only getting better. You just have to know the places to go, but like the quality is very high. Excellent. Okay. And we'll put a little link um, in the description regarding our recommendations for great yes. food. I've seen them and I, two thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Before I moved to Uruguay, I wish I had known. Before I moved to Uruguay, I wish I would have known the real cost of things and had a better sense of like how to be strategic about, you know, what elements that were 
costly to include and not include. All right. And the biggest difference between my life before and now? I think uh, the biggest difference between my life before and now is that even though I have a full-time job and a one and a half year old daughter, I'm not really stressed hardly ever. I love because that. I think the surroundings of where I live and the environment and the people and the vibe don't allow you to be stressed, even if you want to. <laughs> even if you want to be stressed, you're not you allowed to be stressed. Be it's vibe. like they don't, it just, yeah, when you want, like what I was saying at the beginning, when you want to go out and be rushed and figure things out, it, it doesn't work that way. So you just have to take a step back and take a, take a deep breath, which I've found to be really good for myself. You're going to live longer in Uruguay. I'm going to live longer. I feel great. Yeah. hundred percent. So much, Holly. It's been so brilliant to talk. And a pleasure. Thank you. And I need your advice. <laughs> we'll be done. We'll be done. All right. Bye. To learn more about relocation consultations, go to www.guruguay.com and hit consultations.